Hey everyone, Sean Stevenson here, author of the Throne series, and let's talk spoilers because we've got to discuss this new book by R.L. Stein, Goosebumps House of Shivers book number two, Goblin Monday. So let's talk about all the spoilers. Here we go. This is your last warning. This will be a spoiler filled video. I'm going to talk about all the plot points of this book. So if you do not want anything spoiled, go watch my spoiler free video instead of this one because I, like I said, I'm going to talk all about this book. So go watch the spoiler free one if you have not read this yet. If you have read this book, welcome to the discussion. So let's dive in. Last, last warning. This is spoiler territory. Get out now. Don't blame me in the comments if you kept watching because I give you like 60 seconds of, hey, warning, this is gonna be spoilers. All right, here we go. So let's discuss this book. Okay, so my some of my predictions came true. <laughs> I predicted, based on the cover and the title, that the main character would be going to a grandparent's house. I thought it might be their grandparent's house, but it ended up being their friend's grandparent's house. But were they friends at all? Because Todd and Jewel were not his friends, because Mario was not their friend. Okay, I want to jump to the ending here, because that the ending of this book had me scratching my head a bit. So Mario ends up being an agent for the United Goblin Hunters, which I love... I love that the acronym for that is UGH, U-G-H. That's totally such an R.L. Stein thing to do. So he ends up being an agent for the, you know, United Goblin Hunters, Todd and Jewel and their whole family, the grandparents, the parents, they're all goblins, and they're hiding in plain sight by pretending to be humans. So they're actually goblins, and Mario, this is his first assignment to go and round them up. Now... One interesting thing about that is throughout the book, there are a lot of moments where Mario doesn't seem to know what's going on. And it's in his head narr narration wise, because this is in first person point of view. So Mario kind of plays it off like he doesn't know what's happening. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't understand what the goblins are all about, anything like that. And so that was kind of interesting to be in his head when he's saying things like, uh, are goblins real? Is he? Does he believe the stories? The grandpa Tweety, who is talking about all these different stories of goblins and things, like is it real or not? And so I thought that was kind of interesting, and part of me wondered if that actually worked. I kept thinking, I don't know if that actually works based on the way that you had Mario narrating the story throughout the throughout the book because he comes across as not understanding or knowing anything and trying to prove to Todd and Jewel that their grandparents are goblins I think is very interesting because I also thought if he's this agent who has been trained although this is his very first mission how does he not think about the fact that Todd and Jewel are going to be goblins too if the grandparents are goblins you know, maybe they're half goblin. I don't know because we never really heard if the mom was totally a goblin. I guess she is based on the fact that when she and the dad come back into the house, they have hooves on their feet. And then that made me think, are they actually goblins or are they some other kind of creature? But if the dad is the child of the two goblin grandparents, then he would be a goblin as well. So that would make the mom at least something and the kids would definitely be part goblin. So... The fact that Mario never thought about that was kind of confusing to me. The other thing I think is really interesting is this book is like gaslighting the Goosebumps book because throughout the book, Mario gets gaslit by everybody. Like when he sees the lovebirds in the, in the birdcage in the living room and then later they're gone after he had seen Grandpa Tweety rubbing them on his face, which was so creepy. That was one of the good like creepy kind of scenes. Like it reminded me of... Mr. Mortman in the library in The Girl Who Cried Monster 100% reminded me of that. And so the lovebirds are gone and everyone's telling them, there were never lovebirds. Maybe we should get lovebirds. Oh, lovebirds sound fun. I really liked that aspect of this book actually quite a bit. And I do think Arl Stein had no idea that he was adding in this gaslighting characterization subplot to this book. I think he just didn't even know he was doing it, honestly. I think it was something that was a subconscious thing his brain did, which is, you know, very philosophical and writery. But I think writers, that happens to them. Sometimes they write things that they don't even realize the, sub the connections their subconscious is making within the text. And that totally is what happened here, I think. 
you know, Mario's being gaslit. So I think it makes a really interesting conversation for kids about gaslighting. Like, what do you do if you see something? And parents and friends and authority figures are telling you, no, you didn't see that. That's not what you saw. I think that that's a very interesting conversation for kids to think about and have. Because that happens in the world where people are gaslit and told that, no, you didn't see that or you didn't know that or you can't actually think about that. Like, that's not a thing. I think that's an important conversation for kids. And I wish... R.L. Stein had wrapped that into the ending somehow. Instead of doing the Agent United Goblin Hunters thing, that was one of those like humor twist endings of Goosebumps, in my opinion. I think that R.L. Stein made it like a humorous thing and a twist, but then also super creepy because Todd and Jewel at the very end start to eat him. So I and, I and I felt like it cut away at the right moment for that, which made it a very creepy good ending. But also, this is the other thing I was thinking. If Mario has the nutmeg-filled leaf blower, why doesn't he just set it off in the car? I guess because the parents are driving and that would like stop them from being able to drive and they might crash. But still, if you're being eaten, like, you kind of might take any chance to get out of that situation. So why didn't he just set it off as soon as he realized Todd and Jewel are also goblins? I also really liked the reveal of, wait, who actually invited Mario on this trip? Was it Todd? Was it Jewel? I thought he was your friend. I thought he was your friend. I thought that was great. That was a great, great addition to the storyline. And really sold the idea of, like, wait a minute, Mario is not who he seems to be, which I think is very interesting. Now... The creepiest scene in this book is the rabbits. And, well, the rabbits and, I guess, the bird eating. I think those are the two creepiest scenes in this book. The part where he looks out the window and sees the rabbit and the way that R.L. Stein describes it with, like, the belly ripped out and, like, the blood puddle. I was like, oh, that is disturbing and nasty. And also, I was thinking, like, why did... Why did the creatures just kill the rabbit and not eat it? I kept thinking about that the entire time. I was thinking, why didn't they eat the rabbit? Why would they leave it there? Like, were they just trying to scare Mario? Because the rest of the people are all goblins. Although, the rabbit was gone later. So I was curious if that rabbit went into any of the stews that Mom Mom kept making throughout the book. So I kept wondering, what's in this stew? This stew is not just stew. What's going on here? And so if Grandma is a goblin, I wouldn't be surprised if that rabbit made it into the stew. And I wish that connection had been made somewhere. But it wasn't. It was kind of just left off to the imagination. So the other creepy scene was when Grandpa Tweety eats the bird. And that was so gross and disgusting and I was wondering why did he eat only that bird and not the other ones maybe it's because it was a certain kind of bird and the other ones he didn't want to eat but he like talked to the other bird so I thought that was kind of interesting I was trying to figure out like why is Grandpa Tweety only eating this kind of bird the other lingering question I had was when Todd goes down the hill sledding and then goes off the bump and he like flies off, hurts his head it seems like, and then he's fine. I was wondering, wait, does like goblins have some kind of like regenerative ability where they don't get hurt or they can heal quickly? Because it definitely did sound like in the book writing that he like cracked his head and that should have been a clue to Mario that Todd and Jewel are not what they seem. But I guess it wasn't. So I thought that was interesting too. I kept thinking like this is another unexplained sort of thing that I don't really get R.L. Stein what you're trying to do with this. Like is does he just heal quickly? Is that like the weird thing? Or is it just like supposed to be a scary moment? Because the sledding scene, if you think about it, doesn't have much to do with the rest of the storyline. It's just kind of random. Plus I guess you could say Todd and Jules worry about the parents being gone the whole time was fabricated because they would have known, well, our parents are goblins and they're out there somewhere. Unless they were thinking that the goblins were captured. That could be what it might have been about. And the whole search party idea kind of freaked them out a little bit of thinking, are our parents going to get caught by the United Goblin Hunters? Like, what's going on here? So I didn't really love the sledding scene necessarily. The other thing that I do think is interesting is the parts. How R.L. Stein is putting these books into part one, part two, and scariest book ever, there was a part three. In this one, there's just two parts. And I kept thinking, 
I don't know why you're doing these parts. This seems like an odd choice because the narrative flows. There's no need to have a part like this where there's a different section because it just is more of the more of the same after the part, even though it kind of sets it up to sound like things are going to get scary. And so it just goes into part two and it just continues. So I thought that was interesting. The other thing I did really love though is that the goblin showed up early. I like when the monsters show up early. I don't like it when it's at the very last 20 pages that the monster finally shows up. I like that there were goblins early on, that they were a threat early on, and I totally guess that that cat was not trying to get at something in the yard but was trying to get out of that house because that cat did not want to be inside there. Which I was thinking, cats are so good at sneaking out past people. I'm surprised the cat didn't sneak out when they opened the door, but maybe it was dangerous outside and less dangerous inside comparatively, I don't know. So at the end of the day, I did not love this one as much as the first book. I thought the first book was better because it had better plot twists. I do feel like the first book had a lot of running around kind of stuff where there's a lot of different creatures that they keep running into and this book was more settled in one place with the same ominous kind of situation and so I did like that. I thought that was a good change of pace for these books. I am sad that my prediction of wanting this to be like a connected Goosebumps universe in the sense of not in any sort of like the same characters keep showing up, but in the end of Scariest Book Ever. The spoiler for Scariest Book Ever, if you have not read that one, this is a spoiler for that book, so check out now if you do not want this spoiler. But I did, I was kind of sad that my prediction for the fact that the two kids at the end of Scariest Book Ever opened the book and then I wanted it to be like that unleashed all the monsters and creatures into the world and that's where Goblin Monday, these goblins came out of the book. But that's not what happened it's just a different story and with different characters and a whole different situation so i do think that's interesting though this book falls in the goosebumps fantasy zone where there's a lot you know there's sometimes there's fantasy ones like legend of the lost legend there's these fantasy type ones that and beast from the east that rl stein writes this one falls real clearly into that fantasy zone of goosebumps books with a ending that is like a humor ending so i thought that was kind of interesting so at the end of the day what did you think of goosebumps house of shivers book number two goblin monday this is a spoiler review so feel free to go spoiler heavy in the comments write down all your things all your thoughts what do you think what do you think about some of the things i brought up do you think rl stein was thinking about the gaslighting situation on purpose or do you think it was subconscious? What do you think about the book plot? All the things. Write in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you more about this. And until next time, everybody, keep reading. Bye.